on in common, you know, the saints saints of my God, God the gathering, oh man, are we going to tell the story of how we overcome, and we will understand it it better by and by. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Wake up for me this evening. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love him too. Now look at the one you second guessed the first time. Say, good to see you too. (laughs) Amen. God bless each and every single one of you that are here on this evening. Thankful for those of you that are visiting with us. God bless you. And we're glad to have those of you that are tuned in via live stream as always tuned in with us. Um, Prayerfully, you'll be blessed by those things that are said here um, on this evening. And we had, again, we had a wonderful worship service here on this morning. Um, I I, I believe, you know, I know. (laughs) Preacher, I I figured something out. I, I figured out the key. When I don't get a whole lot of amens, I'm saying something real. <laughs> look, when, look, when I'm walking down somebody's street and when I'm stepping on toes. <laughs> but when I come here, God about to do a oh, glory, glory, glory. <laughs> amen, amen. But how many of y'all know we don't just need some of the word, we need it all. We need the whole counsel of God. If we're ever going to be who God has called us to be. And I would be less of a preacher if everything I told you was to get you stirred up and to get you to shout. I love that. Don't get me wrong. But you ought to know what you're shouting about. And we ought to know what it is that God has instructed us to do um, so that we can live our lives for him. Again, we know that we are kicking off our family week um, this week. Again, we'll be um, going throughout this Wednesday. So, again, want to encourage all of you um, to participate in that. Bring your family out. Prayerfully, they'll be blessed by those things that um, are said and done. Um, And on this evening, I'm going to be like Elizabeth Taylor told one of her husbands. I won't hold you long. So um, we're going to be coming out of Proverbs chapter number 22, and we're going to (laughs) be Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number six. Is where we will be here on this afternoon. Very familiar passage of scripture. For most of us, you know it, you quoted it, you've used it in your own house several times. But first of all, I want to start. One day there was this little girl that was in the kitchen with her mama. And she looked up at her mama's hair and she noticed her mama had this real jet black hair. And she noticed that there were like five or six white strands of hair sticking out of her mama's head. And she said, Mama, why are those white hairs in your head? She said, well, baby, every time you do something wrong or you be bad, I get those white hairs. And so the girl sat there and she thought about it for a minute. She said, Mama, why grandmama hair look like that? (laughs) Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number six. (laughs) Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from him. I simply want to talk about this afternoon, training up your children. Now, I want to put out a disclaimer that since I'm new to this, that everything I'm giving you is from God's word. Uh And I believe that if I'm going to give you some information, that that's the best source that I can use is from the word of God. Now, first, I want to start out that every person that is living today, every person that is alive must come to the realization that you have the power of influence. You have the ability to influence somebody. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. It does not matter if you're an evil person. There are people around you that you have an influence on. Sometimes our influence is it encourage people. It'll build them up. And while other times our influence may discourage or tear down. And one thing we cannot know is how deep our influence will affect people because only people can see our actions. 
and hear what it is that we have to say. So as Christians, we need to be concerned about what kind of influence we have, not just on other people, but as I hinted at this morning, we need to be mindful of the influence that we have around those that we are raising up. Psalms chapter 127 and verse number three said, Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. They are the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now to have a child, I believe is one of the most rewarding experiences that you will ever have in this life. And while it is also one of the most rewarding, it's also going to be one of the most challenging times in their life, especially when they get to the age where you can see yourself in them. Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Over in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 4, it says, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. So simply put, fathers, this goes for mothers as well, you ought not get your children to a place in the relationship that you have with them. You ought not get them to a place of wrath. You ought not get them to a place of anger, but whether you ought to train them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Do you know what the word admonition means? It means instruction. We ought to be given instruction from the word of God. Our children will not accidentally stumble upon the path of righteousness. It ain't going to happen like that. I'm sorry. The road of life does not lead to the path of righteousness. You're going to have to teach them that. 3 John chapter 1 and verse number 4, he said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Can I tell you something? That the greatest achievement that your child can have is not that touchdown that he made on Friday night. The greatest achievement that you as a parent can have is not teaching your child to master in the things of the world, but whether the greatest thing that you could ever teach your child is how to love God. The greatest thing that you can ever teach your child is how to fear God and how to serve God. And I believe that we as Christians, whether you're a parent and you be honest about it in today's context, most of the grandparents are parents twice. Your parents three times over. But whether you're a parent or whether you're a grandparent, I want you to recognize that you have the power of influence and you got to be mindful about the things that you are passing down. How many people you know that have lived lives of hurt and they pass that down to their children? How many people have been misused in so many instances in, in their life and because they don't like nobody, they don't trust nobody, they teach their children not to like nobody and not to trust nobody. Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 19, he said, for I have known, this word known here also means chosen him in order that he might command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteous and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Now he's telling Abraham, Abraham, I'd already made you a promise. Y'all know the promise that he made to Abraham. He said that in what? In your see shall all nations of the earth be blessed. That's what's going to happen because of you. But if you want that to happen, he says here, you got to get your children in line. You got to have your house in order if you want to receive the blessing that I have for your life. And do you not know, child of God, that God holds us to that same standard? That if we are being put in the position to raise up children or grandchildren, that you got to be mindful about the things that you are passing down to them. The things that you are teaching them and making sure that they have a knowledge of God. I believe that Timothy is the greatest example of somebody that was raised the way that he was supposed to be. Now, I liken myself to Timothy because I was not brought up in the church by a man. I was brought up in the church by my grandmama. I came to know Christ because of the influence that she had in my life. Can I tell y'all that the majority of the stuff that I preached to you did not come from a university? It came from the things that I was taught by my grandmama and by my great grandmama and by my aunties. Just let me tell y'all, and yes, some of y'all can be honest and say, the greatest knowledge that you can get can be around people that have lived through some stuff. 
people that themselves have been around the bend, that have been up the mountain and come back down, those are the people that you can get the greatest wisdom from that can help you to live your life. So I, I was brought to the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ by the same way that Timothy was. He says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Somebody can say, preach, I'm here because of my mama. Somebody, somebody can say, preach, I'm here because of my grandmama. I'm here because of those people. And guess what? Those were the same people that even though they had brought you up in Christ, when you got outside of Christ and got outside of yourself, those were the same people that were praying for you. That were interceding for you. And you can be honest and say their prayers are the reason you're back where you are right now. So his mother and his grandmother taught him and they influenced him in the way of the Lord. And we know that his father most likely had nothing to do with his training. Why can I say that? Because he was a Greek. And he was mixed up in all kinds of stuff. So he had nothing to do with that. And we read about that in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 1. And since his mother and his grandmama influenced him in God and brought him to the Lord, it helped him to become the preacher that he was. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 2. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So can I tell you that you did not learn about Jesus Christ, that you did not learn the gospel to fold it up real nice and put it in your pocket and wait on Jesus to come. But whether God has given you the knowledge of what you have so that you can go out and teach somebody else so that you can go out and be a blessing in somebody else's life. And maybe the people that you are going to bless are in your own house. Maybe they're in your own family. So that's why you need to get the knowledge that you need so that you will be, can be a blessing in somebody else's life. Now, one way that we can make sure that we are giving a good influence, as we talked about this morning, making sure that God is number one in your home. Making sure that Jesus is talked about in your home. Don't wait the Sunday to be talking about Jesus. Don't wait till Sunday we start singing, oh, Jesus, I love calling on your name. Don't wait until that time. But on a regular day-to-day -day basis, there ought to be some kind of conversation going on about Jesus. There ought to be some time, whether it's before your children go to bed or whatever it is, you ought to set aside some time for prayer and conversation to God. And that's how we can set it up. Jesus teaches this idea. If you read it, you can write it down. I'm going to read it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. He said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall because it was founded on a rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat that house and it fell and it didn't just fall, y'all. The Bible said, and great was the fall. Y'all know the same is true when it comes to having a strong presence of God in your own house. If it is built on the word of God and those in your home are doing their best to stand upon the word of God, then it is going to be a house that can stand against the things that are going to be thrown at it. Because we already spoke to this morning, the devil is after your house. I know you didn't see him when you went there, but he was standing right there by the refrigerator when you went back into the house. I know why you were standing over that stove frying that chicken. He was right there. Oh, what we finna have to eat. He was right there. He was present in your home. We have an adversary, church. He don't just follow you to church. He follow your money to your job. He follow you when you're going into Walmart. He's following you everywhere because he has come to seek and to steal those things from our church. That is what he has come for. We got to begin to build strong relationships with Jesus Christ. 
and make sure that your children and your grandchildren have a strong relationship with God. Bring them to church. Bring them the Bible studies and other things so that they can gain knowledge about Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, the, when we read uh, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 7, it does not mean they won't ever leave God because you know that ain't true. You were taught about God. You were raised in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You've been in the church longer than Brother Peterson been alive. Praise God. But there came a time <laughs> in your life well, you got on the wrong side of the track. Even though you knew what was right, there was a time when you weren't stand by what was right. You just wanted to do what was wrong. That happened. But you can say that even while that stuff was going on, I can remember those things that my mama had taught me. I could remember those things that the Sunday school teacher had said to me. Those things came back to my remembrance. And even as far as I got out, I went too far that the word of God couldn't come out and get me. Y'all remember where God found you? Let me just get you out for a moment. I know you are brother and sister so and so right now, but I want your mind to just travel back for a second. When you weren't stunned by God, when you weren't stunned by the church, when you weren't stunned about being faithful, and thank God that you were not too far out that God could not come out and get you. We got to be careful about what we say as we talked about this morning. You got to be careful about the words that you use. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good and necessary for edification, that it may impart grace unto the hearers. And let me say this, the world is going to put your children and grandchildren down enough. Don't put them down with your words. There are so many children that got so much stuff to face on a day-to-day -day basis in the school. You don't know, some children, you see it every day. They are being bullied to the point of committing suicide. They're experiencing all that stuff in the world. When they come home, the least you ought to say is, I love you. The least you ought to say is, you are somebody. You can be anything that you want to be. Take some time to encourage them. If it, it should not surprise you one bit that children curse. That shouldn't surprise you. But where did they hear it from? Where did they get it from? Where in their mind did it become okay for me to say that stuff? Where am I getting it from? So we got to be mindful about that stuff because what I've learned in a short time is that children are like sponges. They soak up stuff. And maybe in the wrong place when you're not expecting it, they're going to repeat something that mama or daddy said. And you're like, what you say? I said, what you said, mama, you know. <laughs> we got to be careful, church. And then we have so many people, so many children come up in homes where People are, are deep in the alcohol and people are deep in the drugs and things of that nature. So when children grow up and when they face problems, they want to solve their problems the same way that daddy solved his problems. They want to solve their, their problems the same way that mom and them solved their problems. But even if you have a struggle, why would you want your child to be exposed to the struggle that you have? The, the writer says in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number one that wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler and whoever led astray by it is not wise. I need to read that again for some. He said wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. So if you are drinking to the point to where you let that stuff control you and how you act and what you do, you are not a wise individual. I didn't say it, he said it, get mad at him. When you're at home on a, on a regular basis, do you remember to pray before you eat? Little things. Do you remember to remind your children and those in your home to be thankful for the things that they have. On, to recognize that all this stuff that you have didn't just fall off a tree. 
all of this stuff that you have then just poof come out of the sky but be mindful be grateful for the things that you have because there are children all over this world that would give anything to have the things that you have teach them how to be grateful for the things that they have in this life if you want to build strong christian home church you got to teach children how to be obedient and how to fear god how to not just respect you, but how to respect other people when they get out of the home. You know why some children can go to school and so easily misbehave and talk to the adults like they ain't got no sense? Because they do it at the house. Because they are used to doing that. So if I can talk to my mom and daddy this way, who are you? I can talk to you the same way. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 1. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that your days may be long in this earth. I talked about that this morning, but I'll say it again. You know, there are so many young men. And when I think about it, every day, so many young men losing their life to gun violence gang violence and all other types of things getting ahead getting out there and getting involved in so many things 19 20 21 haven't even began to live life don't even know yourself don't even know where you're going and you're losing your life because you're caught up in all of this foolishness shouldn't we want better for this generation and, should, and we need to recognize that even here in the body of Christ, our sisters and brothers, you have an influence on those that are around you. And maybe you can't do everything that other people can do, but if you can simply be an encourager to somebody else, guess what? That's enough. If you can simply look at somebody, you see somebody's having a bad day, they're going through something, just look at them and say, the Lord bless you. Be encouraged. I want you to lift your head up. I want you to hold your head up. I don't want you to walk around with your feet dragging in the sand and with your face in the ground. I want you to hold your head up proud because you are fearfully and wonderfully made, says the Lord. You have been made in the eyesight of God so you have a reason to smile and to hold your head up high that's how we ought to encourage them church we ought to encourage them church to fear God to love God and to be faithful to God why so one day even after you are no longer here they're going to still be serving God they're going to still be faithful to God but if children in this generation are not taught how to love God, how to fear God, that, that it's actually important for me to have a relationship with God and for me to serve him, what's going to happen is that there's going to come a generation of people that don't know God. Can I tell you, church, sadly, that's going to come a day when many churches are going to be empty. There's going to come a day, church. There's going to come a day because children are growing up and getting to the point to where they no longer, in, in our words, doing the God thing. I don't see no need to go to church, you know. I'm good. I'm a good person. That's good enough, you know. I don't treat nobody wrong, you know, whatever like that. I'm good enough. Not realizing that that was a man that thought enough of you to give his life. That was a man that thought enough of you not to just give his life, but to rise up again from the grave with all power in his hand. He loved you enough not to just get up from the grave, but to go back and to sit down at the right hand of his father, interceding on your behalf. We got to train up this generation, church. Because we see it now as we, as we talked about that the, the necessity, the, the, the things that we used to have, youth rallies and, and conferences and, and things of that nature. Can I tell you, I remember when I was a child, it was more kids than there were adults. And I'm talking about all ages, everywhere. What happened to those days? What happened to those days to where Jesus was a necessity and not an option? What happened to the times where God was first place and everything else took a back seat to God? We need to bring back those times. We need to bring back that love for God, that fear for God, that desire to serve him so that one day we're able to make heaven our home. 
Because can I tell you, for those things that we don't do that we're supposed to do, God is going to hold that stuff against us, church. He said that to him that knoweth and does not do it, it becomes a sin. It becomes a sin if you know something that you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to say and how you're supposed to conduct. And you don't do it. The Bible said to him, it becomes a sin. And since we know what the word of God says, let's not just know it, but let's apply it in our lives. Let's not just apply it in our lives, but let's teach it to our children. Teach it to your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews, whoever you have influence over. Let's share Jesus with them. We share, per we share folk business with them. Let's share Jesus with them. How about that, church? We share everything. I went here this weekend. I did this. I did that. Or whatever. Tell them about how you went to church and had a good time and heard the word of God. And if they want to hear something good, they can come to church with you next Sunday. Let's get to that place, church. Because we still got to be in the business of what? Saving souls and keeping souls saved. Because if we don't do that, and as days go by, as years go by, as time go by, and as people leave, what's going to be left if we don't take the time to pass Jesus down to the next generation? What's going to be left if we don't take the time to give them what it is that they need? My brother, my sister, Jesus is still a necessity. He ought to be first place, not second place in your life. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. Guess what? It'll be added unto you. My brothers and my sisters, maybe there's somebody here at this moment. Maybe there is somebody watching us online at this time. And you at this time do not share in our religious conviction. You are not saved. You're not a member of the body of Christ. We offer you at this time the Lord, the Savior's invitation. Come by hearing the word of God. After you've heard the word of God, believe what it is that you've heard. Repent of your sins and confess Christ as your Savior. Be baptized for the remission of your sin. And the Bible says the Lord will add to the church daily such as should be saved. If you are uh, maybe at this time you're already a Christian, but you're just standing in the need of prayer, you have that opportunity to make your prayer request known at this time as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Jesus loves me. <laughs>